Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer and welcome to lesson 23 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about the switch statement. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 23. So in the previous lesson, we learned all about conditional statements by looking at if statements and the different variants of if statements such as else and else if. And we also learned that with else if statements, we can test several conditions before coming to a conclusion. Now, whilst this works fine for maybe three or four checks, any more than this and things start to look complicated and confused. And so JavaScript provides another way that we can test multiple conditions and that is by using the switch statement. So the switch statement takes a single value and then looks through a list of choices called cases until a case that matches the value is found and then each case has its own corresponding code that will be executed if there is a match. Now an important thing to note here is that by default the comparison that we're looking at is equality but we can also check for different comparisons which we'll be learning about later on in this lesson. Okay so that's enough theory let's dive in and see how this all works. So first let's go ahead and create a variable called role and let's assign this to a value of 4 and then to create the switch statement, we simply say the word switch, okay, then parentheses, space, and curly braces. So visually, it looks pretty much identical to an if statement, but with the word switch instead of if. In the parentheses, it's going to be our first value or key. So here I'm going to say role, and of course role is equal to the value of four. And then inside the actual switch statement in the curly braces, as mentioned, switch statements are made up of different cases. So we're gonna say case, and then space, and now we're gonna say what the first case is going to be. So this first case is going to be the number one. Then we say colon, and on a new line, the code that we want to run. So here I'm just gonna say console.log, and I'm gonna say you rolled a one. So let's understand what's going on here. So we created a switch statement by saying the word switch, then we did parentheses, curly braces. Inside the parentheses, we put our key, which was roll. Roll is equal to the number four at the moment. And then inside the curly braces, we say case and then the value for the first case, which is going to be the number one. So in other words, the first case is going to check to see if roll is equal to the value of number one. If it is true, it's going to log the following code. So at this point, if we just save this, you can see that the console returns nothing because it's not true. Roll is not equal to one. If we said four, let's save this. Now our console does return the console log. Obviously the text is actually wrong. Let's go ahead and set this back to one. And now let's go ahead and put in another case. For the second case, we're going to say case two. And then once again, we're gonna log this to the console. But instead of you rolled a one, it's going to be you rolled a two. Let's now add in four more cases. Okay, so here then we have six cases in total and each case has a value. The value is one to six. So our switch statement is going to go through these cases and it's going to check to see if there's a match with our key, which is roll, which up here, as we can see, has a value of four. So obviously the one that matches it is going to be case number four. So we should get you rolled a four locked to the console. Now before I press save, what we get returned in the console might not be what you expect. So let's go ahead and save. Okay, so we get you rolled a four, which was correct, right? Because case four matches. But we also got you rolled a five and you rolled a six. So for some strange reason, these two are also logging as well. So what's going on here? Well, the reason why this is happening is because once a match is found right here, the code is run, but then JavaScript continues to run the rest. So that's why we see you rolled a five and you rolled a six. So how do we fix this? Well, each case needs to end with a break so that whenever we do find a match, once this code is executed, we break out of the switch statement and we don't execute any more code inside. So what we're gonna do then, after the code to be executed on a new line, we're gonna say the word break. Let's go ahead and add this for the rest of them. Okay, so now after each case, we have a break so that if that code was executed, the next line is going to be a break, which then breaks out of the switch statement. So let's go ahead and save and let's see what we get now. Okay, perfect, so we get you rolled a four. So what's happened here then is it's gone through each case, one isn't a match, another is two or three, four is a match, so it logs this to the console, you rolled a four, then the next line is a break, so it breaks out of the switch statement and it doesn't execute any more code. So it's really important that after each case, you include a break keyword. Now we can also provide a default case if none of the other cases match, and this should always go at the end. So down here, instead of another case, we're gonna say default, colon, and then it's gonna be the code to run if none of these cases match. So here I'm gonna say, console.log, we're gonna use template literals, and we're gonna say the number, we'll pull our variable in by saying dollar sign curly braces. So the number roll is not possible. 
So this is the default call that will be run if no match is found. So let's change this then to the number, let's just say the number 10. Let's save. And the console returns the number 10 is not possible. So here there was no match with all these cases and so the default case ran which logs this to the console. Okay, so that's the basic usage of the switch statement. It's important to note that the quality that is being tested for here is strict equality. If you recall from our comparison operators lesson, strict equality is tested using three equal symbols. And so the following wouldn't work. So if we changed this to a string of four, let's save this. And now it says the number four is not possible. So what's happened here is it's logged our default message because there is no match for the number four. Whilst these have the same value, because we're looking at strict equality, they do not share the same data type. This is a number and this is a string. So do bear that in mind, the switch statement checks for strict equality. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So up here, let's change this to let today be assigned the value of new date. And we're gonna say to lock our string inside here we're going to say default and then object which is weekday short now if you have no idea what we did there i will leave a link somewhere to our lesson on the date object so you can go ahead and check that out essentially what we're doing is we're pulling out today's day and we're pulling out the shortened version so today is friday so today we'll have a value of fry so for our switch statement we're going to change all these cases now so the way i'm doing this is i'm just holding down the option key and you can select multiple things and let's change this to today is equal to and then here we're going to put all our days in okay so we've now changed our switch statement so now each case is no longer a number each case is now today which is our variable up here is equal to either monday tuesday wednesday thursday and so on and for the key we change this to true and what this enables us to do is to check our condition based upon different comparisons so not just equal to but we can check more than we can check less than less than and equal to and so on for this example, we're just checking to see if today is equal to the following days. And then we're console logging today is and then our today variable. We've given each case a break. OK, again, this makes sure we're not unnecessarily logging different values. And finally, at the end, we provided a default statement as well that says no idea. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see what we get in the console. OK, so it says today is Friday and that's because today is Friday. OK, so that's all about the switch statement to summarize then. With switch, we can check multiple conditions in a simpler and clearer way. The switch statement takes a single value and then looks through a list of choices called cases. And then once a match is found, the corresponding code is executed. By default, switch statements look for strict equality. Remember to use breaks after every case to ensure that we break out of the switch statement once our code has been executed. We can also provide an optional default case at the end to execute some code if none of the above cases match. And finally, we can also test more complex conditions by changing the expression to true, like we've done over here. So let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So just a single task for this lesson then. Create a variable called fave food and set this equal to your fave food. Then create a switch statement with four foods as cases and then another one that matches the fave food. So we're looking for five cases in total. And then for each case, log, that's right, fave food is my favorite. Think about how to pull the fave food variable in. And then finally, add a default case that says, Fay food not found, dot dot dot, I'm hungry. So I'll go ahead and pause the video, try this out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answer. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a const call Fay food, and we're going to assign this to, of course, pizza. Then let's go ahead and create our switch statement. And the key, of course, is going to be Fay food. And then we need four foods as cases and then another one that matches the fave food. So here, let's say for the first one, we'll go for pasta. And we need to log, just copy this. Okay, we need to make sure that this is a template literal. And the reason for that is because we want to pull in this variable here. And if you recall, the way that we do that is we say dollar sign, curly braces, and then the name of our variable, which is fave food. Okay, so let's create four more of these. We also need a default case as well that says fave food not found i'm hungry so let's go ahead and just copy this and here we're going to say console.log we need this to be a template literal as well and let's just copy this fave food variable from here and paste this in okay so i think we're done so we've got our fave food which is pizza and then we've got five cases so let's go ahead and save 
Brilliant, so we get a match that says, that's right, pizza is my favorite. Okay, so we're really starting to understand JavaScript's conditional statements. In the previous lesson, we learned all about if statements and the different variants, such as if else and else if. In this lesson, we've covered switch statements. For the next lesson, we're going to be learning about the final conditional statement, which is the ternary operator. The ternary operator enables us to write an if else statement, which as you recall, was the most common statement you'll be using in a much quicker and much cleaner way. So guys, be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. Get practicing and I'll see you on the next one.